at this point, I'm going to go ahead and tilt the chassis up, and it's kind of hard to hold. However, what we're going to do is we're going to use the spacer, and that spacer is going to go underneath this little mount and in between the chassis. And I'm going to go ahead and set this back down and place it in where it goes. Looks like I just lost it in there. There we go. Try this again. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set that down in and it lines up with the hole underneath on the bottom of the chassis. And we're going to go ahead and set that down. We're going to grab one of the screws and see if we can hold this in place while we flip the chassis over here and hold the engine and everything all in one fell swoop and um, there's a beveled hole in the chassis we're going to go ahead and insert the screw have it line up with the little post on the bottom of the engine here and still wiggle it around a little and go ahead and get that in which is not proving to be easy at this angle what I'm going to do is go ahead and just flop the whole thing upside down here I'm trying to do this for the camera rather than making it easy but the car is getting rather large now and a little bit uh, more difficult to handle. I'm going to put that in and just temporarily so I'm not really going to tighten it up. And at this point I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my little bevel caps and put it on the screw just like so. And we're going to go ahead and insert one here and one here. At this point we're going to use our wrench, put some Loctite on our screw because it is a metal to metal connection and we're going to go ahead and insert it and screw it in. And snug it up. We're going to do the same to the second one. Again, put some Loctite on it. And install it. The reason that we didn't snug down this third, or the first screw that we put in, is because at this point yet, we were just using it to hold the motor in, and we didn't put any Loctite on it. So what we're going to do at this point is to flip our chassis around here and I'm going to go ahead and remove this and put some Loctite on it and then go ahead and put it back in. Make sure the spacer doesn't slip out. Okay, just about done installing the engine. Go ahead and uh, make sure that one's nice and tight. Let's go ahead and flip her back over. Got real heavy and real big. At this point, um, we're going to go ahead and remove this bolt that we put in earlier just to hold everything. If in fact you used it, it does make things a little bit more simple when you do, but it's not necessary. And then the last thing we're going to do is revisit our fuel lines to make sure that they're routed properly and they're not being pinched off. I'm going to move this back around. Um, the directions tell us that they should go up and underneath the air filter. However, I really don't like that location. Um, I've never run mine that way. I've always just run them on the side like this. We get another little angle here. And the reason that I like that is that I can physically see every portion of the line to make sure that they're not getting pinched. Um, you can go ahead and if you want to you can rearrange your 
little holders here. Um, slide them back or forth to make sure that you have some uh, smooth fuel lines here without being pinched off. So Your little boy is now a man. It's uh, taking up much more room on our table and it is uh, starting to look more and more like a Baja at this point.